Okay. I would like to thank you very much uh, because as a, a, without that presentation we can still have a wrong idea about the global indices. Of course, those indices are already used in our country and help for the classification of some species and even it feeds some decisions. So now we know about it, we can be more careful. And what is needed, of course, is, uh, let's say, uh, more data mm -hmm. in our own country and to, to try to solve our own problem, as you see. Okay, the type of uh, data we have, and even the quality, the quantity also, depends on collaboration. Collaboration with uh, data holders in general. Yes, that is another face of a problem. Yes. They are not willing to collaborate. And uh, that was, let's say, a, most of some questions that Chris raised, uh, let's say, with regard to collaboration. Mm -hmm. If they are published, uh, a collection will be, uh, let's say, lost or they won't come to consult, etc. There are many reasons okay, to make the obstacles for data providing, but we are still struggling. Yeah. Hopefully, we will succeed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, for one second, I'm going to be the optimist. Just one second. And by that, I mean, if you look at some of this array of initiatives, you can say that a lot of the data holders, let's say the institutions that hold data from, from your country, a lot of them have digitized their data and made them available. Okay, so you know, I sent you a bunch of data from, from the GBIF site, there's lots of data in the VertNet site, et cetera, et cetera. So there's been some positive indications. There, now I'm going to stop being an optimist and I'll be a, a realist again. Um, in many cases, too many cases, there are institutions that are just frozen or dead or inactive. Um, I began my career as a museum curator in 1992 and I kind of started in this business back into the 80s. And I've participated in computerizing two major bird collections. Um, I personally feel that there is no excuse for any vertebrate collection not being fully computerized. I think that thanks to new technologies, plant collections are eminently computerizable. And remember what Chris said, um, you know, insect collections are hard. Um, I think he said we have six million insects of which 800,000 are digitized. It's not done, but you can make headway, right? So. That's where I stop being a nice guy, and I think that it should be an institutional commitment, and for people who are curators of natural history collections, it is part of our job to digitize those data. Now, everybody is resource poor, and so we all are dealing with, you know, how do I fumigate my collection and digitize my collection and buy new cabinets and maybe even send out a field expedition when my total yearly budget is this? And so that's where I think there's some room for some very interesting partnerships. You know, let's take a favorite example of mine the British Museum, okay? 
they have huge collections. I know the numbers on the bird collection. It's essentially a million birds, not including eggs. So it's the largest bird collection in the world. It's essentially 100% non-digital, nothing computerized. And if you ask the curators, who are very, very uh, decent people, good friends of mine, what they would say is, we don't have the resources. But you know, for digitization, it doesn't cost big money equipment. It doesn't cost really important, expensive supplies. It's just people. In a developing country, let's take Benin for example, you have people power, right? You've got students at, you know, undergraduate students at a university. And so we can imagine a partnership where the people power and the collections get together. And so I think there's a very rich exploration that should happen very soon. No excuse for not happening very soon. But how about if the big, well-meaning northern collection that has every intention to computerize its holdings but hasn't been able to do it, how about if they accept people power from partner institutions in developing countries that are really hungry for access to those data? And I'm betting that putting those two things together it can turn into a very doable proposition. So that's a model whereby we can take the needs of each party and the strengths of each party and make something happen. It needs to be fleshed out and explored, but I think there, there's, there's hope for opening up those, those gates of data.